coming up on today's Halftime Broadcast. Who has held you back from following the truth? Train your mind. This is how you combat the enemy state of mind. Three words I'd like to leave with you today. Meditate, mimic, and memorialize. And now, today's Bible teaching with executive strategist, Tony Emmerham. Top of the day to you, and thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast of Halftime with executive strategist, Tony Emmerham. I am so delighted that you have taken time out of your busy day today in this 12th month of the year, knowing that the Christmas holiday is upon us, but yet you saw fit to take time out of your day to spend time with me as we bring to a conclusion this topical discussion that we've been having on enemy state of mind. You know, this series really would not be complete if I did not come back and tell you how to combat an enemy state of mind once you have come to the conclusion that maybe some of this is operational in your life or maybe possibly you're in a position where you're coaching, mentoring, helping to develop or discipling someone else who may have some of these issues at work and in play in their life. So I want to invite you to grab your note taking and writing utensils so that you can carry some of these concepts over into what you do daily in order to help someone, perhaps even yourself, combat these areas of mental dealings where the enemy tries everything he can to infiltrate and control your mind in order to prohibit you from advancing God's agenda and God's plan in your life. So turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And again, today we're concluding with the concept of how do you combat the enemy state of mind? This passage of scripture reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I could really end this broadcast there because that is the key to overcoming and combating an enemy state of mind. Use Jesus and the life example that God has allowed us in order to combat anything that Satan, his imps, evil spirits, demonic spirits, any of that would do to try and come and infiltrate your mind with Satan's agenda. The scripture is clear. Let this mind be in you. That means that you have to do something to develop your mind so that your mind is resemblant of the mind that was also in operation in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you how you do that. Three words I'd like to leave with you today. Meditate, mimic, and memorialize. Those three words again. Meditate, mimic, memorialize. So let's go in. Meditate. To meditate means to engage in focused thought on the scriptures. In doing this, you begin to train your mind. In fact, if you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, again, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't rightly divide the word of truth if you don't engage in the process of training your mind and focusing on the scriptures and allowing God to interpret his meaning of what those scriptures mean in your life. So you can first apply it to your life first and then you can begin to minister it to someone else. So meditate on the word. 
You want to develop the mind of Christ that it talks about in the book of Philippians. You have to meditate, engage into a focused thought from the scriptures so that you can train your mind in the things of God. This is how you combat the enemy state of mind. In fact, in Joshua chapter one, verse eight, it says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The prosperity and success that the scripture speaks of here is that that comes as part of and as the reward of living out the plan of God in your life. I don't want to be one that's successful in anything that God didn't mean for me to be successful in. You could be successful at being a failure and never achieve God's purposes for your life because you have allowed your mind to be distracted and taken off course by things that the enemy would have you to pursue as opposed to those things that God would have you to pursue. Study your word. Know how to rightly divide the word of truth when thoughts enter your mind. When something enters your mind and it just doesn't seem like it aligns with something that God would allow or that gives you a peace that surpasses all understanding, then you probably know that it's either been derived or you should know that it's a thought that's being propelled either by your flesh, some fleshly desire or some carnal desire that you have or something that Satan's throwing at you just to see if he can get a hook into you. But knowing how to rightly divide the word gives you the ability to analyze your thoughts in such a way that you're able to determine which source those thoughts are developing from. So if you want to train your mind, you have got to get in the word of God. Our second step here, mimic. To mimic means to copy or imitate closely, especially in speech, expression, and gesture. So when we go back and think about what we read in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it talked about letting God's laws always be on your lips. And then we come down here and we talk about mimic. What are you speaking? What are you speaking that demonstrates that the thoughts that produced the words out of your mouth were produced by a mind of Christ. Can the words that proceed out of your mouth be linked back to a person that operates and governs themselves in the same manner in which Christ would? These are the things you have to ask yourself. In fact, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You know, I was in a training class the other day and it had a picture of some leaders, probably a father and an uncle and a toddler following close behind. The father and the uncle both were deep in conversation. They were walking along down the path. They both had their arms kind of folded behind them with their fingers locked. And there walked the toddler right behind them with the same posture, the same position, appearing as though he was in the deepest thought, just like the uncle and the father that walked before him. And you have to beg yourself to ask the question, if someone were to look at you and your life, the example that your life sets, would it be as if you were truly a follower of God? In this case, it was obvious that the little boy, the toddler, was following the examples of the two men that were walking before him. But when someone looks at your walk, are they immediately able to determine who it is before you that you're following? Does your walk resemble something that's antichrist? Does your walk resemble those things that derive from your flesh? Or does your walk resemble your true relationship and following of God? The scriptures are clear here. We are not to be followers of man, 
but followers of God. And it should be evident in the way we come across in our speech, our expression, and our gestures, our commonplace behaviors, our everyday actions, our everyday pursuits. So let's go back. In order to combat the enemy state of mind, the Bible tells us to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We've covered the first two steps, and that is to, number one, meditate on the word, study the word, show thyself approved, being able to rightly divide the truth, keeping the law of God always on our lips being careful to do everything that is written so that we can live the prosperous and successful life that God has planned for us. Number two, we are to closely copy or imitate through speech, expression, gesture. Our commonplace behaviors and practices should be those that make it evident and clear that we are followers of God as it is written in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. And before we go to our break, 1 John chapter 2 verse 6 reads, The one who says he belongs to Christ should live the same kind of life that Christ lived. I want you to give that some thought. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You are listening to Halftime with Executive Strategist, Tony Emahel. And now, a word of wisdom with Evangelist Sadie Anderson. If you forget everything else I said, or everything else I told you to do, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesian church. If you forget everything else I said, it's above all, put on faith. Take the sword of the Spirit and the helmet. On salvation. You got to protect your head, protect your heart, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Above all, you forget everything else. Take the shield of faith. The word is going to stand when everything else fails. He's a heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall abide forever. See, the word of God is your sword you fight with. If you ain't got the word, how you going to have the word if you don't study? You ain't going to know when the devil is because he'll come with the word, but he's going to leave something out. He's going to leave something out of it. And so you got to know the word. So this ain't right. It about like one time I went to this church back when we lived in Shotsburg. There was an evangelist coming to town preaching. Everybody talking about this particular preacher. How good he can preach. Oh, they preach, jump on your seat, fly through there, whatever. And he was taking up an offering. And had not been for my foundation that I came up on, I might want to fail for some of that stuff. But the word, what clicked, when he said, if you will give tonight a sacrifice offering, whatever, you don't come back tomorrow night and tell me that God had blessed you, I eat my hat. And, and probably ain't nobody ever thought about that. The Bible said, when you give, give ungrudgingly. Freely you give, freely you shall receive. But if you give grudgingly, hoping to receive something in return, you ain't going to be blessed. That man went right on back to Virginia, wherever he came from. Next two or three days, he got locked up for child support. And they don't tell you what else. But if you don't study the word, how are you going to know? You can't distinguish you the truth that. from error. This has been Words of Wisdom with Evangelist Sadie Anderson. Hi, this is Tony Emahel. You know, in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul exhorted Ephesian believers to see prayer as a weapon to use in fighting spiritual battles. Are you fighting any spiritual battles today? Satan wants you to feel that you're all alone and that nobody cares about you or your situation. But he could be no further away from the truth. We are here for you. Join us for prayer during a weekly prayer call each Sunday at 8.30 p.m. This prayer call has two specific objectives. Our first objective is to bind the hand of the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy you. Our second objective is to pray for God's covering and His protection over you as you go about the duties of your week. So join us each week, each Sunday at 8.30 p.m. by dialing 
518-530-1840. That number again is 518-530-1840. You will be asked to enter an access ID and the access ID is 211-341-648. Thank you for making halftime a part of your day today. This is executive strategist Tony Emmahel, and today we're closing out this topical series on enemy state of mind. So turn with me to 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, and it reads, The one who says he belongs to Christ should live the same kind of life Christ lived. The first thing that comes to my mind is everyone who encountered Jesus Christ, everyone that came into his space, experienced nothing but love. Can the same be said for the kind of life you live? Jesus set the ultimate example for us as to how we should be. If you say you belong to Christ, If you say you are a follower of Christ, if you say that you are a believer, do you live the same life that he lived? He lived a life of strict obedience. He lived a life of being led by what thus says the Lord. Are you living the same life of significance that Christ lived? Because I want to take you deeper into purpose Christ lived a life of purpose. He knew why he was here. He knew his his days on earth were limited. And he knew the significance that his presence was to bring in the earth during his time. But he also knew that there would be even greater significance to the life that he lived once he departed. Are you living the same kind of life? This is why I teach the way I teach. And every teaching that I put forth leads back to, are you living a life of purpose? Your life was meant to have a greater meaning than today. A far-reaching significance that extends far beyond tomorrow. But when you are gone, will you have lived the kind of life that Christ lived, where his presence is still known in the earth because of the legacy that he left. He lived a life of significance. Oftentimes when we read this passage, we think of behavior and such. But the kind of life that Christ lived was a kind of life that would continue his practices, his beliefs, his teachings continue long after his death. What kind of life are you living? The third point that I want to leave with you, and then we're going to close this series out, is memorialize. In order to combat an enemy state of mind, you must meditate, you must mimic, and you must memorialize. To memorialize means to be or to provide a memorial so that someone or something would be remembered. Your life should be a memorial to God. When people see you, they should be reminded of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, and yes, his love. So when you memorialize something, you honor it. And you honor it in such a way that it would be remembered. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 26, gives us an example of how Christ wanted us to memorialize him. And I'm going to read this passage of scripture, but I'm going to pull a point out of here that perhaps you've not heard before. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. And it says, When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup 
is the new way of worship made between God and you by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it to remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you are telling of the Lord's death until he comes again. Several points I want to observe in this passage of scripture. If you notice, the memorialization that Christ speaks of here starts with someone taking what it is that Christ has given and placing it in their mouth. He says, take this bread and eat it. You can't eat it without placing it in your mouth. The word says, take this cup, which is my blood, and drink it. You can't drink a thing without placing it in your mouth. And finally, in verse 26, he further explains that when you do these things, you are telling. You can't tell anything unless you open your mouth. God wants you to get his word in your mouth. He wants you to get his word in your spirit He wants his word to flow through your veins. He wants you to share him with other people. You can't get anything out of your mouth that you don't first think about with your mind. If you can get it into your mind, you can get it into your heart and then it will flow freely from your lips. So when we are memorializing the life of Christ, when we are memorializing the existence of our God, It has to be memorialized through our lives, but even more so through what we say with our mouths, our way, our methods of communication. It all has to align. It all has to align. So when we memorialize, it is not coincidental that the Lord uses the entry points of the mouth because what it is that you put in your mouth is what's going to come out. And you can't put anything in your mouth to come out unless it first channels through the brain. That's why we have to meditate on the word. We have to have an intense focus and a study to train our minds to know the word of God. We have to follow God in our behavior. We have to live the same kind of life that Christ lived. And we have to be, and our lives have to be, a memorial to Christ. And all that he has meant to us, and all that he has meant to this dying world. So three words I leave with you today. Meditate, mimic, memorialize, take back your mind, show others the way to bring in their thoughts, their voice, and their practices into captivity. It's all before you. And God has equipped you with everything you need to follow and obey his word. And as we close, and I'm going to go back to Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 7. And it reads, You were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God. For he is the one who who called you to freedom. Be free in your mind. Study this word. Meditate on it day and night so that what comes out of your mouth is a true memorial that accurately represents the life that God desires for you to lead so that others will follow Him. Until we meet again, top of the day to you. You are listening to halftime with executive strategist Tony Emmahel. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Next Level Plus Project Management and Business Consultants. Learn more about how Next Level Plus can help you solve the right problems and seize the right opportunities by calling 704 780 2997 or visit their website at nextlevelplus.org.